What's going on everybody? This is DK Dynamite and tonight we're going to be talking about a new event and operator that was teased for Black Ops Cold War, some spicy content that was found and more. Definitely stay tuned. But before we jump into that, be sure to hit that subscribe button down below. And also as a reminder, I'll be playing with every single one of you to send me proof of using code DYNAMITE over at GamerAdvantage.com. Their link is of course down below in the description and it means the world to me. But earlier today, we got our official concept arts of the new free access week starting on the 2nd, which is tomorrow, until September the 7th. It's going to come with 20 25 plus maps for multiplayer, 9 map modes, zombies outbreak, no round based, but onslaught if you are on a PlayStation taking part in this free access week. They also confirmed double XP exclusively for just Black Ops Cold War that's also happening this weekend. Now before we get into the potential solution to the mystery surrounding Season 5 Reloaded of Black Ops Cold War, let's go ahead and take the sponsor of tonight's video. Now, tonight's video is sponsored by Mythia.com. Mythia is a debit card made for gamers by gamers, which is the first of its kind. You can earn rewards to get free games, as well as PlayStation 5s, Xboxes, headsets, and even more gaming accessories. Every time you use the card, you get a reward, and the rewards are random, so you have to check the app to see what you won. I'm crossing my fingers you guys can win that PS5 that you all probably want. There are even new challenges every single week that you can take part in to win even more prizes. It's a secure and protected system, as it's FDIC insured through PS5. Piermont's bank of up to $250,000. So yes, it is safe. Don't forget there are no monthly fees or minimum balance requirements as well. This is definitely a really unique opportunity that I also haven't heard of until recently. And you can also team up with friends for even bigger prizes. You can add friends to your party on the app and earn rewards together. Join forces to tackle bigger quests and get even better gaming rewards that may suit your needs. Whether you play multiplayer, whether you play solo story games, or whether you need some accessories for your brand new gaming setup. But if this is something that you're interested in, you can check it out with a special link down below in the description to start earning rewards today. Thank you to Mythia for sponsoring tonight video. But back to the video, earlier this afternoon mistakes were made, but not by the community, it was actually Call of Duty's manager over on Twitter, who accidentally put out a tweet just a little bit early regarding the Striker Operator bundle, which isn't set to release until tomorrow at about 1pm Eastern, and they put out a tweet earlier today saying that it was available in the item shop, it actually isn't, in case you guys were confused, and it just seemingly confirms that it'll be coming tomorrow as we all expected anyway, but we also got confirmation that the last content drop ever for Modern Warfare, the Iskra bundle, probably said that wrong has released and is essentially a farewell for that game's life cycle now it had essentially what you could consider a small year two but with the content being spread across many many months with seemingly no marketing to back any of that content up it's a bit strange and like i said if cold war gets any type of year two which i don't think it's going to because Treyarch's working on vanguard zombies i would hope that Treyarch does announce or provide some little marketing for whatever new content is added to either multiplayer or zombies but with a farewell to modern warfare infinity ward will be back with the sequel to that game in about 2022, according to current rumors that are out there. Now, earlier today, Call of Duty dropped a fairly surprising teaser on Twitter saying a new order is about to rise in Verdansk, hashtag Warzone, hashtag Black Ops Cold War, with four images of what looks like Judge Dredd, a popular character. If you guys are a little bit older, you may recognize his movies. He was a fairly popular character in the 90s with a Sylvester Stallone movie, and then there was a reboot in 2012 with Carl Urban, and the reboot wasn't that bad, but in case you guys weren't familiar with Judge Dredd, he is a law enforcement officer in the dystopian future city of Mega City 1, covering most of the East Coast of North America, and he's essentially a street judge, the judge, jury, and executioner. He'll arrest somebody, convict them, sentence them, and then execute as need be. So, a fairly interesting character, which I would never expect to release as a Call of Duty operator, but we may be getting what looks like a 90s action heroes event. And I'm a little confused about that because we already have Sylvester Stallone in Black Ops Cold War and Warzone as Rambo, so will this be the Stallone version of Judge Dredd or the Carl Urban version? I'm just going to go ahead and guess the Carl Urban version, and then that begs the question, right, will there be new lines recorded for this operator in Call of Duty, or will they reuse lines from the movie, similar to what they did in Season 3, with characters like Rambo? and then John McClane. I didn't really have a problem with them reusing movie lines. Instead of getting somebody to mimic or interpret the lines and make them sound similar, I think it was fine reusing the original lines everybody recognizes from the movies. I was cool with that, but we already have a mid-season event in the form of numbers for Black Ops Cold War and Warzone, so will this 90s action heroes type event be intertwined with that, or are there two separate events going on? What this could be, though, is the answer we were all looking for as to why exactly a majority of the Season 5 content is already released, right? Looking at the current roadmap, 
almost everything is out. There's only a few items left on that roadmap, and that still is enough content to warrant a reloaded update. Sure, you know, be my guess with that, but I had a feeling that either it's going to be a very small update during Season 5 Reloaded to accommodate for the fact that Vanguard's beta is going to also be next week with this, or it'll be an update full of surprises that nobody could have guessed, and we'll probably have a similar vibe to 80s Action Heroes with its own trailer, you know, a very 90s, I should say, themed roadmap featuring Judge Dredd. A lot is possible here. I also think, similar to Season 3 Reloaded, where we saw Nakatomi Plaza from Die Hard added to Verdansk, we may end up seeing a location that everybody may be familiar with from the Dread movies, also added to Verdansk 84. Let me know how you feel about that idea down below in the comments, and which location could be added to Verdansk, which location from the movies makes sense as a Battle Royale point of interest. We also know that Raven software tease that something's going to be happening on September the 2nd through the 8th and that's tomorrow. Tomorrow's the second, so I'm wondering what's gonna start tomorrow. Will it be more marketing for Judge Dredd? Is there an event in Verdance that we're gonna start seeing as of tomorrow? I'm a little confused, but you know what? It makes me even more excited for the mid-season updates in case Vanguard isn't your cup of tea so far. I know next week's gonna be fairly busy, right? Next Tuesday, we have the multiplayer reveal for Vanguard, then Wednesday, Season 5 Reloaded, followed by the Early Access Beta that Friday for PlayStation. But as I covered in a recent video, PlayStation Size went ahead and reported that the patch for the next big update in Black Ops Cold War has already been added to the database. Whenever this happens, that means we're about a week away from the update going live as a bit of a preload. So this Monday coming up, we should be getting a full blog post detailing what's going to be happening in the mid-season updates for Black Ops Cold War. We did get information from this very interesting Twitter account, which you may have recognized. He does go ahead and post very spicy information from time to time, and a bunch of quality partners have already reported on this account, so you know he's legit. And what he went ahead and reported is that the main Season 6 operator will end up being Mason, according to the information he has right now. So if that's the case, then expect Mason to probably be the Battle Pass Operator, featuring dozens of different skins we've probably seen across several different Black Ops games, and you'll probably get a skin through the Battle Pass, you'll have his base skin, maybe a bonus skin for buying the $20 Battle Pass bundle, and even other bundles on top of that that are released in the future. I said this before, right? Imagine if they didn't end up adding in Mason in Black Ops Cold War, right? He would sell like hotcakes, so of course they're gonna go ahead and do that to wrap up this game's life cycle with the bang. That's the best way to go out, with a fan favorite and honestly one of the most iconic Black Ops characters of all time. Now, I also believe that the mid-season numbers event, as well as the cinematic outro cutscene, will likely set up Mason's return. You know, Hudson's going to be added in as an operator, also in Season 5 Reloaded, so we'll likely end up seeing a bit of a surprise where Mason pops up, or there is some reason where they bring Mason out of retirement, because we know that during this time in the official Black Ops timeline, he's currently raising David Mason, but the beginning of Black Ops 2, Hudson goes up to Alex and is like, alright, we gotta go rescue Woods. He's in danger, he's captured somewhere in Angola, so Mason leaves. So I guess Cold War's gonna put a spin on that and say, yeah, Hudson went to pick up Mason a couple of different times for some important missions that took Alex away from David for a little bit. So we'll see how that all works out, but this Twitter account also went ahead and posted the current list of unreleased Warzone operators as of today. We first up have Kingsley, who's also a Vanguard pre-order bonus that'll likely release in Cold War and Warzone maybe during or after the beta of Vanguard multiplayer, so we know that's happening. We also have Hudson, who's coming during Season 5 Reloaded. We then have Ghostface, which doesn't have an idea as to when he's going to drop, but that's more than likely for the Halloween event, Hollow's Eve, at some point during Season 6. Season 6 is going to be a very packed season. We then have Mason, who is more than likely the focus of Season 6 with a new Battle Pass, or will pop up as a surprise during the Numbers event. And lastly, we have T9GOE, who may be Judge Dredd. I'm not sure what that could stand for. Let me know if you know the abbreviation or what the abbreviation means down below in the comments. So we have a lot to look forward to here, and this may be a somewhat 80s Action Heroes Part 2, except Judge Dredd isn't from the 80s, from the 90s. So we may end up seeing maybe more than one 90s fan favorite character added to Cold War before the end of this game's life cycle. This Twitter account also went ahead and said that Barebones was supposed to come back in Cold War multiplayer, and still may. You guys may be wondering what's going on with other party games, right? Such as Infected, such as, what else is there? Sharpshooter. There's a couple of party games that haven't made their return, but are usually in every Black Ops game. So if I think Season 6 is going to be very packed with a ton of expected content and even some surprise content that is going to blow everybody's mind and end off this game's life cycle with an absolute bang. There is a plot twist I wanted to go over though, which you guys may know about and was pointed out by the Ghost of Hope earlier on Twitter today, and that is that there could be a, essentially a bit of a surprise with the character of Dragovich in the final season of Black Ops Cold War. Over in Galova, which is an outbreak or even fire team, you will notice there is a most wanted poster 
for Dragovich, and we're like, wait a second, we thought he died at the end of Black Ops 1, so will they find a way to bring him back without ruining the ending of Black Ops 1 as a surprise in Season 6? Will that be the reason why Mace comes out of temporary retirement to go ahead and deal with this number situation, right? Stitch has a grand plan going on in Verdance, dealing with sleeper agents, so will they somehow tie in Judge Dredd into that, which would be a bit strange, or will Mason say, all right, you know what, Adler has been brainwashed by the numbers program, let me step in and fix the problem, because that hits home for him, or will Dragovich pop up and really piss Mason off since he thought he killed him many years ago? So is Stitch really a puppet and is working for Dragovich, and all of a sudden, the season three intro cinematic cutscene may make a little bit more sense. We know that they wanted information about the numbers program and the file is labeled for Dragovich they picked that file up so the Dragovich want it himself again I'm not sure what that could lead to but there's a lot going on here that may be set up and would really surprise a lot of hardcore Black Ops fans to also fill in a better gap in between Black Ops 1 and 2 for those out there that may not be satisfied with the temporary conclusion we had to Mason's arc during the ending of Black Ops 2. Now Call of Duty also confirmed 50,000 accounts were banned in Warzone yet again today but what's really interesting is that the Call of Duty account yet Yesterday began marketing something that I didn't expect to see. So as they said, if you cheat, we are coming for you. And they're warning people that, yes, a very strong anti-cheat is coming with the launch of the Vanguard Warzone integration. So the problem I have with this, right, is will this encourage more people out there to cheat so that they can hope to be highlighted in an official Call of Duty tweet? or in official Call of Duty marketing. I get what Call of Duty is going for here. They're trying to make some light out of an unfortunate situation that, you know, is something they probably didn't predict to be as bad as it is right now. I get it, right? The game has a somewhat functioning anti-cheat that people have very easily broken through, but a much stronger one that everybody wants and needs is happening in just a few months time. But until then, to kind of remedy the problem, they're gonna try to play some jokes about it. I'm not sure how you guys feel about that, but let me know down below in the comments. I think for right now, it's as interesting Thing, and I'm curious how much this will actually solve until the full anti-cheat releases. But at the end of the day, like I said before, I think regardless of a strong anti-cheat, people out there will probably still find a way to break through it. And regardless, people will always be complaining about skill-based matchmaking for as long as Call of Duty continues to exist. But last and definitely not least, YouTube Gaming. So I'm sure you guys saw the announcement, but not only did Dr. Lupo go ahead and sign with YouTube Gaming, but so did Tim the Tapman, which came to a bit of a shock to a lot of people in the gaming community. And here's the thing, right? I personally always felt like regardless of which platform ends up being better, YouTube will end up finding finding a way to sign larger creators, incentivize people to stream on YouTube instead, and eventually we'll end up incorporating features that Twitch already has. Not that YouTube's gonna do it better, I mean they may, but you can already see as of recently they added in a subscribers only chat, a members only chat, the ability to clip certain parts of your event, and I'm sure they'll be adding in crazier features in the future. I mean, we already have the ability to raid other channels. I think only larger YouTube partners have that option though, but you guys see what I mean, right? They're getting there, slowly but surely. Early, YouTube will be a true competitor for Twitch in terms of gamers that stream. Now what's painfully ironic is that on this big day of all this YouTube gaming news, I did a live stream attempting to do a double agent event with Cold War voice actors, some of our friends. We had a good time, but there were some serious technical problems with YouTube streaming altogether, where people that were watching on mobile devices literally couldn't watch the stream. The stream was broken, the playback was buggy, the audio was out of sync, people that were watching on desktop and console were fine though, so how ironic is it that it's for the first time as I've ever streamed on YouTube, I was seeing some ridiculously broken technical issues on YouTube's end. It wasn't OBS, it wasn't my internet. I apologize if you guys out there were dealing with those issues while watching me, and I appreciate those that stuck through the entire stream as we still got quite a few laughs in, but how ironic is it that it happened on today of all days? So hopefully as they just signed some new streamers, we get to see all those issues slowly fade away or get resolved hopefully sooner than later. But that is about it. This has been DK Dynamite. Leave our thoughts down below in the comment section. What are your thoughts on the tease of Judge Dredd for Black Ops Gold War and Warzone? Is there going to be a 90s Action Heroes event that will sit alongside the Numbers event in Season 5 Reload? And also, what are your thoughts on the other spicy content that was reported by that Twitter account that showed you on screen? Really hope you enjoyed, and peace out, everyone.